Oh my god, I'm so excited. Hey Alexa, how many people asked me to make this video? I don't have an Alexa, and the answer is none. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name's Ali, and today we're making what is probably the most important video on my channel. If you're watching this, I'm assuming that you've seen most or all of Mary-Kate and Ashley's movies as well. These films are truly my childhood. I'm so excited today to sit down and put them in their place, literally, and rank them for you. This is going to be a highly controversial video, but I welcome criticism. So once you've finished this video, please put your selection of how you would rank them in the comments below. Before I do anything, I need to explain to you my ranking systems. So at the top we have God tier. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's the highest you can go. This movie is heaven. It is, you know, chef's kiss. Second is gold star. It's incredible. You've done a great job. Your teacher or your coach gives you a gold star because you really did that. Say OK is inspired by the song by Vanessa Hudgens, Baby V. And that's like a middle, mid-range kind of film. I respect it. I enjoy it. You know, nothing wrong with it. Just not gold star or god tier. Louis Tomlinson level is, it's not offensive. It's never done anything to annoy me or upset me. I just, for some reason, I don't love it as much as I love others, you know? Finally, we have Sorry to This Man which goes without saying. I hate to say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. Sorry to this man. Okay, we are starting out so strong. A holiday in the freaking sun, baby. This movie, I feel like, was very ahead of its time in terms of casting. Megan Fox, of all people. I mean, if you've seen Jennifer's Body, you know that Megan Fox is just incredible. Megan Fox was playing Brianna Wallace, as in Wallace's department store Wallace's. On every family holiday you go on, there is always like a rich, cool, popular girl. And if there isn't, it was probably you. Also Julian from One Tree Hill is in it as Griffin and he's so small and cute. There's an incredible scene when they're in like a teen lounge and it plays Us Against the World with the actual band performing it. So I know a lot of people associate that song to this movie. I personally associate that song with the Lizzie McGuire episode where Miranda has an eating disorder for like 25 minutes. Let me know what you think of like when you hear this song. It is incredible in both, to be fair. To sum up this film, we have cute boys, yachts with smuggled artifacts, and probably my favorite trope slash cliche, which is someone going on a date with an earpiece and someone else who knows that person better feeding them the answers. Not it, you idiot. Not it, you idiot. What? My favorite character in this movie is actually Champlain, who is, I don't even know if he has any lines, but he's like the weird man that they chase around through the markets. Champlain for my real friends and real pain for my sham friends. I think I'm gonna put Holiday in the Sun in Gold Star. It may get bumped up later depending on where other films go, but it's just hard judging the first one. I don't want to put a god tier right out of the gate. I feel good putting it there. Next up, we have Billboard Dad. This is the first film where we see an example of a very popular thing in the Olsen Twins movies. For some reason, they always seem to have one parent absent or missing or passed away. That very much works in this film because they are trying to pimp out their now single dad. This film doesn't include any foreign boyfriends, but it does have a fun guest appearance from Troy and Belisario, AKA Spencer from Pretty Little Liars. And then also that blonde kid from The Little Rascals, which Mary-Kate and Ashley were also in. So maybe they really liked him and then cast him Interesting. Also something very important to note about this film is their hairstyles, but also glasses. They absolutely stomped all over the Instagram baddies with their little tinted sunglasses, usually blue and pink to coordinate with the correlating twin, you know, the tomboy and the girly girl. I really wanted to make a joke and call it Billboard Daddy, but the dad is just like not it. So I think I'm gonna put it in Say Okay. It was a favorite of mine as a kid, but would it inspire me now? No. Next up, we have the iconic film, Alice is Sealed. In this one, we don't have any dead parents, but we do have foreign love interests and Stanford from Sex and the City. Looking at them now, Pete and Avery, who were like their surfer Aussie boys, they're not really anything to write home about, but at the time, they were it. Every Australian girl at some point had like a surfy stage, even if we didn't surf. So this correlated perfectly for when you wanted like a freckly cute boy that could teach you how to surf. Plus, Luna Park, Avery's dad owns the place. If we're talking love interest, he's a good one to stick with. It definitely loses points for trying to convince us that that jar of Vegemite was Vegemite when it was actually just a jar of Nutella with a Vegemite label on it. But I can't really blame them because I hate Vegemite and I would do the same thing. My favorite scene is definitely when they made dresses or outfits out of their bedspread. It's a great little sound of music moment. It maybe perpetuated the myth that all Australians have kangaroos for pets, but all these kind of foreign films that take foreign 
films. All of their movies that take place in a different country are very stereotypical, so I can't really blame them for that. All of that being said, oh my god, this is so hard. I think this is gonna be a really controversial rating. I just don't really feel like re-watching it right now, so I'm gonna put it in Say Okay, and that's where it'll stay. Okay, next up we have Double Double Toil and Trouble. I feel like it's a little bit underappreciated, but also they are very young, so I get it. The only notable scene that sticks out to me is when they paid their friends to switch Halloween costumes with them so they could escape. That was just like incredible to me. That was genius, brilliant. However, if I were ranking them and rating them, which I am, it's not really on the level of the others, let's be honest. If we were to watch it again, the acting wouldn't be that great. The storyline is just a bit meh. So I'm gonna put it in Louis Tomlinson. It hasn't done anything to upset me or offend me. It's just eh, you know? Next up we have oh, getting there. Boy, do I love a good road trip gone wrong film. <laughs> This movie made driving around in a convertible seem like the absolute dream, but I have to agree with, I think it was Lindy that said this uh, from the back, it's only good if you're in the front two seats. If you're in the back, the wind hits you and it's just a pretty uncomfortable situation. So one point deducted for the kind of lie that this movie sold me. The star of the film would be homegirl Charlie, who they think is like a low-key farm girl that lives in the middle of nowhere, but is actually very wealthy. And her dad has both a plane and a yacht. The absolute trash of the film is Sam. I know the word friend zone came from friends when Joey said, oh, you're in the friend zone. But if you were to look up friend zone, I feel like Sam's face should be in it because, oh, Mary-Kate was not interested. She said, look, we're in a gray area. I don't want to like, I don't want to push forward. And he just kind of kept working his slimy little way in there. Sends kind of the wrong message, you know? There were a lot of great storylines in this movie from getting on the wrong bus to flying to the wrong city because she got her sands mixed up. I did learn that Raj, who was the Elvis impersonator they met, was in real life sentenced to jail for stabbing his girlfriend 23 times, I think. So... so Yikes. Yikes. But in lighter news, Toast was really cute. Toast and Jen were like the popular girl meets bad boy, skater dude, enemies to lovers trope. Kind of stole the movie if you ask me. You know Jen Moore, you're real dazzling when you're dissing on people. Roast? It's toast. Whatever. Not if you were the last guy on planet Earth. So I guess that's a no. So, you know what? I think I have to give it Gold Star. I think it is that iconic and I would happily rewatch it right now. I mean, look at the hats that they're wearing. Next up, we have How the West Was Fun. I'm gonna spend all of 10 seconds on this film because I don't remember it. They're so young in it. Who can honestly tell me what happens? Not me. It looks like they're in Montana and I really like Montana as a state, but that's about it. So I think it's gonna have to go in sorry to this man. Nothing personal, it's just that you're so forgettable. Next up is The Challenge, which again might be controversial. I think I enjoyed this film a lot more than other people. I love that in their films, they're always very stark contrast. Like Mary Kay is always the tomboy, hippie-ish, more boyish kind of girl, like less organized, very type B. And then Ashley is very type A, very girly, very organized. That shines through in this film. So this is the one where they go on a sort of Survivor-esque show. And I feel like this was kind of before reality TV really popped off as well. So it was a little bit ahead of its time. How the book was so uh, ahead of its time. So Mary-Kate's bohemian hippie wardrobe in this film is everything. Very Sophie from the first Mamma Mia. If you couldn't tell, I'm very much a Mary-Kate. I'm very type B, I'm very laid back. Please let me know below, are you a Mary-Kate or an Ashley? The most iconic scene in this film is at the very end when all of their previous love interests from other films come out in this really weird meta scene that I love so much. Oh, uh, hello. Remember me? Ashley, I was the first guy to fall in love with you. In the Bahamas, remember Holiday in the Sun? <laughs> and Mary-Kate, I've been in love with you ever since getting there. Forget it, guys. Does we'll always have passport to Paris mean anything to you? I hate to break up this little party, but um... Billy? It's like if you were to see a Simpsons character drawn by the illustrator that does the Archie comics or something. It's like a different style, like they don't belong in that world. So it's a little bit uncomfy, but also never been done before, you know? I also have to give them props because Mary-Kate's character was vegan or vegetarian and we love that. We stand not eating animals. Look, it's gonna get, it's getting say okay. I would watch it, but I wouldn't recommend it necessarily as like the best or my favorite. Speaking of favorites, Next up we have It Takes Two. 
what a film. You all know how much The Parent Trap inspires me and just is a part of my life and my identity. It really is just my identity at this point. However, this film is even more influential. So instead of being twins that were separated at birth, they are instead identical strangers. <laughs> So one of them lives in Brooklyn and is like this kind of street kid, tomboy, no surprises that it's Mary Kate. She lives in an orphanage and just like runs around playing baseball all day. And then Ashley's character lives with just her dad because her mom has passed away and he owns a summer camp, which is where everything comes to a climax. Ashley sits in her, you know, beautiful mansion house looking out across the lake being like, oh, I wish I was an orphan. They look like they're having so much fun. So one day they meet in the forest and they decide to switch places. So that was my first influence to want to work at a summer camp. My favorite scene in this whole film and in any Mary Kay and Ashley movie is the food fight scene in the camp dining hall, which then turns into them jumping in the lake and kissing, well, almost kissing. You wouldn't dare. Ah! A kid that I've worked with actually looks a lot like one of the butt kiss kids and it freaks me out so much. Anyway, this film is the most influential, impactful, iconic, amazing film of all time. No surprise, it's going straight to God tier where she belongs. Next up, we have New York Minute. I didn't think I was gonna have two legendary films in a row, but here we are. It has cute boys, it has an absent parent, and obviously the girly girl slash tomboy trope. It's amazing. The most iconic scene for me is a tie because I love Simple Plan. So the video shoot where they sing vacation and stage dive is a dream. But then also at the end when Mary Kate recites Avril Lavigne lyrics as a inspirational speech. Why'd you have to go and make things so complicated? also memorable. I was speaking to my friend Ducky on the phone last night and she said her most memorable scene is when they take a shower in someone's hotel room and then have this slow-mo hair flip for Jared Padalecki and he's just like overwhelmed thinking he's in a porno basically. And it's interesting because even though Jared Padalecki from Gilmore Girls and Supernatural is in this, I think the other boy is actually cuter, the one on the bike. That's just my personal cup of tea. I feel like this is when they dated like men for the first time rather than boys. So I feel more comfortable to <laughs> objectify them. It's between Gold Star and God Tier for me, but I think for the fact that I think about the quote, Roxy, did you eat this man's chips? I think about that line all the time. So I think it needs to go in God Tier. It had a cinema release. None of these other films on the list can say that. And even if it didn't do well, it made it to the box office. So God Tier. Next up, we have Passport to Paris. This film already gets a great point from me because one of the characters is called Ali. How many of you guys can say that you had an Olsen character named after you? The boys in this were cute. The language barrier was hard for the girls and also me as a child, <laughs> but they were just very cute in the way they interacted. The scene when they test the boys and see if they can tell them apart and they switch places and the boys still know that it's them, invented true love. I wouldn't be doing this movie justice if I didn't talk about Brigitte, who is a supermodel that they befriended and her outfits. Yeah, yeah. She is living that Parisian cherry emoji life that Instagram baddies wish they were. This film is going in the gold star tier. It's a strong movie and it's what she deserves. Next up is Switching Goals. So this movie really made me wish I had a twin because we could just trade places when someone was bad at something. Now I was bad at sport and also dating and boys. So I don't know what I would have to offer my twin, but just the concept of it, I really appreciate. As for outfits, this film was pretty lacking because they were in soccer uniform most of the time. So I can't really base anything off that. Michael Cera was in it for like one scene. So that's kind of cool. Watch it. I have a very delicate bone structure. But both of their love interests were just kind of heads. So I think this film is gonna go into Louis Tomlinson. It's not terrible, it's just not amazing, you know? I'm so sorry to Louis, I feel like I should have named this category something else. I feel really bad now. He's just not Harry, you know? So next up we have To Grandmother's House We Go. Again, I'm not gonna spend very long on this. They get kidnapped. There's probably some questionable storylines in there. Probably had some really cool 90s outfits. They were like five, so they're cute, but they're not really relatable. It's very nostalgic to me, so I don't wanna put it in sorry to this man. I'm gonna put it in Louis Tomlinson, yep. Next up we have When in Rome. I have a lot of, what's the term? I have a lot of um meat to pick. But I have a bone to pick. I have a bone to pick with this film. For a film centered around a fashion internship, the outfits were very uninspiring and pretty lacking to me. Does anyone honestly remember this movie? Because it's just so forgettable to me. If I wanted to go to Rome, I would watch the Lizzie McGuire movie. She is going straight into, sorry to this man, 
and I'm not, I'm not sorry at all. Finally, we have Winning London. Now, straight off the bat, I need to say that this film confused me a little bit because their the character names are the same as their names in their show, So Little Time, but flipped. So that was a confusing choice to me. I loved the Harry Potter reference when they say that their relative is Lord Voldemort. That was a cute little moment for me. Now, I think the real star of this movie was their trench coats and their almost matching, very groovy bell-bottom pants. I did love the kiss in the air vent. However, the guy, Brian, he was just a bit, he was a bit blah. He was a bit um, charcoal, as our old friend Sam from Getting There would say. And I really just keep coming back to the name thing. Like, why did they use the names from that other movie but switch them? I, someone can explain that to me. I think for me, this is a, a mid-tier film. And so I think it's gonna go in Say Okay. It's a good film. Well, <laughs> is it? It is, it's, mm, it, it is. Uh, me convincing myself that I like it. I do like it more than all of the ones in Louis Tomlinson. I don't like it as much as the others in Say Okay, but it's better than the Louis Tomlinson level, so it has to stay there, I think. I'm very pleased with aesthetically how this has turned out. Gold Star is just like our classic, like on the move, fun, mishap adventure films. You could kind of put Alex of Silt there, and maybe I should. I think our lips are sealed does deserve a gold star. You know what, I'm sorry, I have to move it. It has to go in gold star. My tear is kind of ruined, but she does belong there. And I feel like those of you that have been watching this really judged me for having it and say, okay, like those four, that gold star tier, that makes sense to me. Now I'm like, does Billboard Dad deserve to go? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm a little uncertain about Passport to Paris. Should she maybe go down one? Okay, but that movie did more for Paris than, I can't even think of anything to reference because there's nothing as iconic as this film. Has Paris ever hosted the Olympics? Disneyland Paris wishes it was that influential. I think it's like, I may not watch it right now, but I have to leave it there because of how important it was in my life. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I think I need to move it as well. I think Passport to Paris needs to go and say, okay, I think it does, but at the front. You guys can't sit there and judge me because this is really hard, okay? <laughs> I'm struggling. You can't judge me, let's be honest. You really can, I want you to. Wow, I think I'm like sweating from doing that. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. I know this is a very sensitive, touchy subject. So I really just hope that you could see where I was coming from, even if you disagree. Making a tier video is something I've always wanted to do. So I really hope you liked it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Make sure to subscribe down below and hit the bell and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.